What does it take to fight off a superpower? When Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, many observers and analysts assumed the war would be over quickly. As Russian troops massed on the border, stormed into the country and laid siege to Kyiv, it seemed like only a matter of time until Vladimir Putin was in control of his smaller neighbor. But against the odds, Ukraine's armed forces defended their territory and began to win victory after victory. How did they do it? All year, social media has been filled with home videos of the many ways that soldiers and civilians alike have countered the bigger, better equipped Russian military. One of these has been repurposing salvaged equipment from defeated Russian forces, old Soviet leftovers, and even abandoned civilian homes. This has long been a tactic of underdogs in war, but here's how Ukrainians have taken the practice to a whole new level. Since the beginning of the conflict, large amounts of machinery have been left behind, captured, or shipped into the country. Now, in scenes resembling the weaponized steampunk vehicles from the movie Mad Max, Ukrainian soldiers have turned a range of civilian cars, trucks, tractors, and dune buggies into fearsome tools of combat. Armed to the teeth, these quickly constructed weapons have been inflicting some serious damage on Russian troops all year long. Valuable against both tanks and aircraft, they can function in nearly any condition, firing and racing away before they can be targeted. Civilian vehicles mounted with firepower are nothing new. In fact, they've been around almost as long as cars themselves. But the modern variety, known as technicals, were pioneered in places like Afghanistan, Libya, and Somalia during the 1990s. Originally a tool of armed groups without access to proper military hardware, they became a tool of governments during the early days of the US-led War on Terror. US and British special forces began using technicals extensively to counter the Taliban in Afghanistan, as they could navigate places with little to no infrastructure. Gradually, the technical became a key part of special operations, while also retaining its value to less equipped forces. But with sufficient military hardware at their disposal, why are Ukrainian forces utilizing technicals? While most lack the armor of a tank, technicals are fast and cheap. This makes them perfect for waging asymmetric warfare against a stronger enemy. They also do well in hard-to-reach areas, since technicals are much easier to find parts for and repair than traditional military hardware like tanks or Humvees. The war has left Ukraine filled with vehicles, many perfect for conversion into these deadly machines. And while they've recently stepped up their efforts, the story of Ukraine's creative technicals goes all the way back to 2014. After Russia annexed Crimea that year, Ukraine's volunteer battalions began to assemble a fleet of homemade war vehicles. These were often put together in abandoned industrial warehouses. Using scrap metal and old Soviet parts, the battalions began to retrofit everything they could get their hands on in preparation for more Russian aggression. Many of their early models resembled reinforced tanks, focusing on extremely heavy armor over mobility to try and hold a precarious front line. But as the prospect of a full-scale invasion loomed, Ukraine's production of light technicals greatly increased. When full-scale war finally arrived, millions fled their homes, fearing for their lives. The exodus left a huge collection of cars, trucks, tractors, and other automotives abandoned across the country. Many more modern vehicles were also donated from abroad, including armor-plated pickup trucks and SUVs. In the weeks after the invasion, dozens more small, crowd-funded factories were established inside and outside Ukraine's borders. There, volunteers attach weapons and armor plating to technicals and send them to the front line. While it can slow the cars down, the extra layer of armor on a technical is crucial as it can save those inside from shrapnel or other deadly hazards. Among the most successful of these retrofitting operations is Cars for Ukraine, run by Ivan Aleski, a 25-year-old esports analyst originally from Kherson. Started in March, his venture has created dozens of technicals from cars around Europe. They can purchase each truck for under $6,000 and quickly transform them into fearsome weapons of war. Each is also a statement of patriotic intent, painted with a Ukrainian flag and a now popular slogan from early in the war, Russian warships, go f*** yourselves. But this is just one among dozens of operations, many of which are using extremely innovative designs for their technicals. While almost anything with wheels can be made into a technical, they have traditionally been constructed from light flatbeds and pickup trucks. Mitsubishi L200s are reportedly among the most desirable cars for technicals in the Ukraine, along with the Ford Ranger and Toyota Hilux models. All of these are known for their durability and easy handling. This is crucial for quickly escaping enemy fire and navigating areas with unpredictable terrain and weather conditions. Ukrainian technicals have also been seen sporting a massive range of weaponry, including machine guns, drones, and multi-rocket launch systems. Many of these were taken from defeated Russian forces, 
This has led to some eye-catching results all across the internet. A recent taunting video from Ukraine's defense ministry shows a Russian helicopter rocket launcher attached to the back of one such Mitsubishi truck. In another instance, a dilapidated Soviet-era Volga sedan was mounted with a remote-controlled 14.5mm heavy machine gun. While both the car and machine gun are dated, they have been integrated with the modern remote control system. Clever designs like this have helped Ukraine reduce its battlefield casualties while inflicting substantial damage on the often unprepared Russian military. Another group of soldiers were filmed using an automatic Soviet 2B9 Vasilek 82mm mortar from the back of a farm truck. The Vasilek is usually based on a small, wheeled carriage and can rapidly fire armor-piercing shells with 75-gram warheads capable of penetrating 100mm of plating. While Soviet weapons like these are decades old, they can still dish out punishing firepower. This is especially true when mounted on a technical, giving the mortar far more versatility than the standard ground-based model. Others are more flashy, like this BMW technical, complete with a Ukrainian-themed paint job and truck-mounted machine gun. And it's not just domestic and Soviet-made weapons either. Western military support has also given Ukraine hundreds of powerful modern weapon systems like Stingers, Howitzers, and Javelin anti-tank missiles. Ukrainian soldiers have been making the most of this new equipment. One unit has been using a flatbed technical to transport mobile anti-aircraft teams armed with Stingers. After spotting a target, the soldiers can be seen quickly dismounting, firing, and returning to the vehicle to make their getaway. Another creative unit applied the tactic to the ground, making their Peugeot truck into a mobile hunter-killer anti-tank platform using javelins. The key feature of all of these models is their ability to quickly escape, before Russian artillery can target them with retaliatory strikes. But it doesn't end there. Recently, it seems that Ukrainian technicals have also moved beyond regular civilian vehicles. Pictures and videos have emerged of soldiers using heavily armored dune buggies, painted in dark green camo and studded with weapons. Several of these vehicles were recently seen near the strategic city of Izium, complete with Stugna P anti-tank guided missiles attached to the roof. The Ukrainian-designed Stugna system has a range of over three miles, and its missiles can be remotely guided by console or laser-targeted manually. They can also carry many different types of warheads, including tandem-style rounds designed to break tank armor, high-explosive fragmentation, and even thermobaric payloads. The Stugna is usually fired from a tripod on the ground, requiring two to four soldiers to reload and move the unit. But mounting the anti-tank weapons on a technical gives them far more flexibility, allowing them to be used for hit-and-run missions. But Ukraine's ingenuity doesn't end there. A similar domestically produced missile system, the RK-3 Corsair, was seen on a buggy in another part of the country earlier this summer. Usually ground-based like the Stugna, Corsair systems have a range of 1.5 miles and can also use a range of different shells. Even lighter than pickup trucks, these deadly dune buggies have become invaluable to Ukrainian troops as the war has moved into the eastern part of the country. Many other rocket launchers have also been spotted on Ukraine's buggies, including dated Soviet weaponry. For instance, one video shows a buggy covered in camouflage netting firing a 9M111 Fagot wire-guided missile system. These buggies themselves are pretty badass too. They appear to be from a range of models. Some are likely modified versions of the Ranger or MRZR models produced by US defense contractor Polaris. In their off-the-shelf form, these vehicles are intended for reconnaissance and logistics missions rather than open combat. Depending on the model, the Polaris Doom buggies have over 100 to 200 horsepower and over a 2,000 pound payload capacity. Despite being very light and maneuverable, they also have an extremely durable chassis and strong suspension, making them ideal for navigating difficult areas. But Ukrainians also appear to have reinforced theirs with body armor and camouflage for extra protection against Russian fire. Other Ukrainian buggies have been far more homemade. One, captured in a photograph by the Associated Press, was constructed from a Peugeot 307 coupe convertible and with the doors and windows removed. While not a tactical vehicle like the Polaris buggies, the Peugeot 307 is still fast, able to go from 0 to 60 in 8 to 10 seconds. Speed is crucial for Ukraine's technicals, especially for the country's rapid counter-offensives in recent months. The buggy hosting the Corsair missile system is yet another model. This variety of buggy also seems to have been domestically manufactured. It has two seats in front and a cargo platform at the rear of the vehicle, fitted with a tripod and optics for the Corsair missile system. On the road, 
Two missiles are carried in storage boxes at the back for easy retrieval and use. But how have these strange-looking dune buggies and other technicals helped Ukraine hold its own against Russian tanks and artillery? Early in the war, they played a part in helping Ukrainians repel Russia's initial push into Kyiv. Their high maneuverability proved much better at urban combat than cumbersome tanks. And after the Russian offensive failed, the fighting moved east shifting into a heavy artillery war in the Donbass and Luhansk regions. For a number of reasons, technicals have been even more important in this context. Despite its battlefield victories, Ukraine has been heavily outgunned by Russia all year. While this has started to change thanks to the influx of Western weaponry, Russia's enormous guns can still easily destroy slow-moving and immobile targets. But by attaching their firepower to technicals, Ukraine has made their artillery much harder to destroy. Another advantage has to do with geography. While the eastern part of Ukraine is relatively flat, it is crisscrossed with rivers and has fewer major roads in the west. This means that much of the fighting is taking place in the countryside, where technicals have a substantial mobility advantage over tanks. Russian tank losses have been enormous, and by mid-October, they had lost nearly 1,400 tanks, averaging nearly 10 a day. Ukraine's inventive use of technicals has contributed to these startling numbers. Whatever course the war may take this winter, it seems likely that technicals will remain a key part of Ukrainian operations due to their speed, flexibility, and low cost. While they certainly look like something out of a dystopian universe, these vehicles have proven themselves to be extremely effective in real-life combat. And just as they have gotten more inventive since the beginning of the war, Ukraine's technicals will probably keep evolving as they receive new and more lethal weapons from the West. But what do you think? How valuable have the technicals been to Ukraine? And will they keep being used and upgraded? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want more military analysis from military experts, make sure you subscribe.